guys, Scott with Heritage Farms, Texas. Well, wanted to take this opportunity to show you a project that we did, and that's a little bit different. We're at the uh, corporate offices, AKA my house, and this is uh, my two daughter's bathroom. Oh, there's Coco, the company dog. And what we're looking at here is, uh, of course, both of my daughters are grown and out of the house at the moment, but, um, when we built this house, you know, we did a couple of things. We built for square footage more so than amenities uh, because I knew it was an up and coming area. I mainly wanted to get as large a house as I could in this neighborhood when I built it. And I knew in the back of my mind that I had the opportunity to come back and upgrade rooms as we went along. So uh, in this video, we're gonna show you uh, what we did. Originally, we had uh, built-in cabinets here. But we made the mistake of putting one sink and this was a jack and jill bathroom i think that's what they call it where you have two bedrooms that share a bath in the middle two girls with one sink let me tell you what that created a lot of fights over the years but now you can kind of see we've upgraded got a new vanity in here dual sinks we also used to have a uh, actual tub that was here that had a shower in it with a shower curtain not very attractive there was also cabinets on the wall here so we really came in, we got rid of the, uh, the tub, put in a uh, walk-in shower with the seat, also had a built-in over here for the uh, various shampoos and things like that. Upgraded, went to a frameless sliding door that you can see on here. So we'll show you some videos and uh, let you take a look at it and kind of talk about some of the things that we did. But uh, you know, once again, major uh, improvement to the uh, to the bathroom went with ceramic tile on the floor that has that wood plank look also went with the textures on the uh, the walls skim coat if you will I don't know if you can pick that up or not but uh, and then also the uh, chip and Joanna you know shiplap on the uh, accent wall dual mirrors and uh, I think it all came together really nice so uh, you guys watch the video uh, see what you think and uh, We'll talk about it later. Thanks. Okay, so what we're gonna show you in today's video is a bathroom remodeling project we did at the corporate offices. So uh, we'll take a look at it. It was a Jack and Jill bathroom. Uh, my two girls shared this as they was growing up. There was endless fights because there was only one sink. And as you can see in the video, it just wasn't that attractive of a uh, bathroom before. We had a tub shower combo with a door um, not a big fan of that setup. Uh, the bathroom was a little bit crowded with the cabinets hanging on the wall. Uh, the single sink vanity was always a problem with two girls. Imagine when they were both teenagers. So we decided, uh, you know, they left, they moved out. We're empty nesters, so we decided we would get started with remodeling this bathroom. And uh, you can see we started doing the demo, taking the cabinets out at this point in time. Uh, you can see where the old cabinet was and uh, the old ugly ceramic tile flooring. From here, what we did next was we started busting the tile. And that was probably the dirtiest part of this job was getting all of the tile out and trying to figure out the uh, best way to go forward. Then we took uh, the marble backsplash out on the tub. And then from there, we proceeded to try to figure out the best way to get the tub out. We took the cabinet off the wall and now demo's making pretty good progress at this point. So we have something to work with. Uh, the old cabinets are gone, the old vanity's gone, and uh, we can actually uh, start focusing on getting everything up. Once we got the tile up, we still had to work on getting the floor perfectly smooth, clearing that out. We then decided we would get in here and cut out the uh, drywall so I could bring a plumber in to actually add the plumbing for a second sink. Uh, so we cut the drywall out. At the same time, we had to have the plumber come out to do some changes to the old tub configuration uh, in that regard. So there's a good example of the drywall being cut out so uh, to give the plumber access. You know, I know how to stay in my lane and contract out certain things. Here's the finished product after the plumber comes in. He's put the second drain in. He's moved the hot and cold water over. So we're now ready to uh, proceed on that. I can come back, fill it in with a new piece of drywall and uh, proceed to the next step, which is uh, putting the uh, shiplap on that back wall. So let's see where we go next.
All right, there's my wife and she's actually starting to sand the plywood. We took some sheets of plywood, had them cut down at Home Depot to a certain width. We started sanding them. And this is a economical way to get the appearance of shiplap, especially if you're gonna paint it. Uh, you can actually just put the boards up on the wall. Uh, I definitely recommend you get sanded boards to start with and then you sand them even more to get the edges nice and pretty. Uh, we used a nickel for the gap in between them. Uh, then, in essence, we started going in and looking at the uh, sheetrock on the walls in the uh, tub surround. And uh, I think the uh, shiplap turned out pretty nice, gives it a little texture. You know, it's also hard, you want to make sure your wall is pretty level and straight, and uh, really a great little way to add accent to a room, especially if you're only doing one wall. And, uh, you know, so there you go. You can see all the plumbing's in place coming through the shiplap. We're getting ready to add the vanity back in once the flooring's in. So you can just see little examples of what we did on the plumbing, how we cut around it with the shiplap or the plywood, uh, basically used uh, expanding foam to seal any gaps or openings that came through the wall, uh, just to kind of make it a little bit better barrier. So, progress at this point. We then came in and put a skim coat on the walls. We took plaster and basically kind of gave it that textured look. Uh, you know, not the popcorn spray. We eliminated the popcorn spray on the ceiling and in essence uh, just went with the smooth ceiling, painted it white. We added crown molding to the ceiling and from this area you can kind of see we have painted the walls gray and I know it's got a special Sherwin-Williams gray coat and I'm going to butcher that. But now on to the prep of the shower. This was probably one of the most challenging parts to this job. So we had to have the plumber come in. He had to adjust the shower head, raised it up a little bit. Uh, at the same time, he raised the controls up from where they were down low for the tub, moved them up to waist high. Uh, also, we had to change the drain out because uh, in a tub, it really doesn't matter if the water drains slow because you get out of the tub. In a shower, you need it to drain fast, so we had to have uh, a little concrete work done there. We came in and put a party board backing uh, around the entire uh, shower area just to give it a good moisture resistant uh, barrier. You can see we came back, filled all the joints in on the uh, hardy board and basically uh, got it sealed in and ready to go. We used a KERDI, K-E-R-D-I shower system, which is basically a water membrane system that is waterproof, mildew proof. Uh, there is a uh, floor that comes in that you pick and select for your uh, shower base. Uh, you can see there, that's where we finished all of the drain work. We came back and put new concrete around the drain and basically gave it that nice form and finished look uh, after punching a pretty major hole in the floor. What a mess that was. And there's the finished product, or you can see with the uh, with the actual uh, concrete drying, and now we are making progress. We got all of the infrastructure in, now it's back to putting the hardy board back on the walls and uh, starting to try to wrap this project up here as we move along. So there's the Curdy system. It comes with a basically a, a plastic base that has a lip on it. We also purchased their corner shelf or corner seat. Uh, we purchased their shower insert for uh, basically a, a ledge where you can put your razor or shampoo or conditioner, or whatever you want. They have this thin membrane that basically you put mortar down, you apply this membrane and it overlaps sheet to sheet and you come back and you uh, put mortar over the actual seams on that and it creates truly a waterproof barrier. Uh, just a great system. These guys have it highly engineered, highly structured. Uh, you can just go with what they have. It makes it very easy to work with. You can see the various things that you have to pick out. That was before we put the uh, hardy board in that section. And uh, you come back, they even have these little special pieces that go around the shower controls. and just really makes for a professionally installed shower. So you can see right there, we finished all of the uh, basically all of the curdy membrane uh, on the edges. We also came in and one thing we did on the bottom of the lip, we didn't want to put tile there because it's such a small area. So we had white marble cut 
for the bottom and sides of where the uh, glass shower door would go. Really gave it a professional, nice polished finish. Uh, there's a couple of pictures of me out in the garage using a wet tile saw to actually cut the, uh, the tile that we used. And we started laying the base layer. Uh, these were pretty big tiles. I mean, these were like 12 inch by 18 inch. So we covered a lot of ground pretty quickly. Uh, we used these little uh, clips that actually uh, helps to contract and expand. And I'll have to get the name and put a link in there on what those clips are, but it basically keeps the edges of the tile perfectly level as you work from section to section. And the key of course is not mixing too much mortar. The key is moving slow and making sure that every piece is level. And when you're working with tile this big, that's a challenge. And uh, we came in here and we drew out on the wall the design before we ever started. That way we had a roadmap and a template of how to proceed and to make sure that everything was centered and looked uh, professionally done when we finished. So, you know, this was a big project. So we worked a couple of layers a day. You can see we're at the point now where we have a little accent band of little small two inch by two inch tiles that runs through here. And uh, that was very time consuming. They come kind of in a mesh or net, so you can actually put them together at one piece in time. But even then they move around and you really have to focus on your spacing and make sure everything looks nice. So you can see here, we went all the way floor to ceiling with the uh, ceramic tile and just really coming together, making a huge difference on uh, what we started with. So uh, this was one of the most time consuming pieces was the insert and getting the insert centered with the accent band. Uh, you can see we use like a river rock to go in the back of the uh, inserts and also on the floor of the shower itself. Just once again, trying to make it pop, give it a little bit of contrast uh, we like the dark colors, you know, in a shower, it doesn't show, you know, grime and grease and everything else that might be there. Uh, just makes for a nice clean appearance and uh, kind of gives it that rich look that we were uh, trying to strive for here. So right here is when we get into the little piece I was talking about, uh, we cut in a piece of marble, white marble for the uh, shower door to sit on and also to hold on the two walls really made it pop up against the, uh, the contrast of the floor pan and also the, uh, the grout and the tile itself. So I just couldn't be happier the way this came together. Uh, I'll tell you when we get down here to the end of this video, we, we managed to save a lot of money by doing this project ourselves. So the only thing we contracted out was the plumbing. And if you noticed, I did all of the prep work on the plumbing. So when the plumber showed up, his time was really limited. He wasn't here very long at all, but it just gave me that peace of mind and knowing that a plumber signed off on everything that was done. So now the bathroom's coming together. You can see the shower is pretty much tiled out, uh, looking good. And uh, on the floor, we went with, once again, ceramic tile. The, f the stuff on the floor was really tough to work with because it has the appearance of wood planks. It even feels like wood, but it's ceramic tile. It's like six inches wide, but the pieces are like four and five foot long. So we had to level the floor. So in this picture here, you actually see where we poured the uh, leveling compound on there, got the floor perfectly leveled. And then we came back and we started laying the uh, tile planks, if you will. And th these were kind of fun to work with, but you know, they were really long and it just, it's a little bit different. If you've laid a lot of ceramic tile, most of the time, you know, tiles either 12 by 12 or six by six or four by four, but just an odd kind of thing to work with. Once again, we use those clips to make sure all of the joints and edges were level. Uh, just a neat setup on those clips. They are reusable. Uh, at least the red portion of them are. You have to buy the new white portions. Uh, you just break them off when you're finished and it's below the grout line. So at this stage, things are heading our way. You know, we got the uh, shower finished, the shiplap wall, and there you can see we actually finished the uh, ceramic flooring and uh, just very pleased with where we're proceeding here at this point. Uh, another example of where we were doing some of the work and how we were trying to offset and make sure you had as many full pieces as possible. And there's a picture of what it's looking like from the other side, making progress. 
And we're just kind of wrapping up some of the pictures here of the flooring, the overall edge on this, and you can kind of see that, uh, hey, we're moving right along at this stage. So pretty excited. And uh, we are now ready to go to the vanity, look at installing the vanity, uh, installing the shower door. Uh, we came in, had to put new baseboards back in. Once you put the baseboards back in, of course, you gotta paint the baseboards, get all of that finalized and just gives you that nice finished touch. At this point, you know, the snowball's picking up speed. We got it heading in our direction and uh, we can just kind of keep moving along. So one of the things we did was <laughs> one of my favorite stores, Costco, you know, from time to time, they have actual uh, vanities and stuff for sale. We found one that we absolutely loved. It was had plenty of drawers, it was well built. It had a white marble top on it. Um, had the two sinks, had all of the faucets, everything ready to go. Uh, and the price was very reasonable. So you can see here's a picture of the vanity that we picked out from Costco. Very, very nice. My wife found some mirrors to actually go. So each sink had their own mirror. Uh, but yeah, the, the vanity itself was just perfect for our application. And I was really amazed we were able to find that at Costco of all places. So now let's take a final look at the finished product. And you can see uh, how we took a very generic bathroom and turned it into uh, a more luxurious, a little bit higher end finished with the uh, tile and the full shower, full walk-in shower, the frameless shower door, high-end uh, fixtures on the uh, shower heads and drains, uh, all stainless steel, very nice. And there's a picture of the door, which is kind of like a sliding barn door, but there's no frame on it. Very unique design and it works extremely well. Really love the finished look of it and uh, glad to have this project done. So, you know, this was one of those projects that uh, if we would have hired a contractor, you know, start to finish, it probably would have cost us somewhere around $10,000, I'm guessing, to have this kind of bathroom remodel done. Uh, to this fit and finish, but I can tell you we did this project for right around $3,700 uh, all in, and I felt like that was a pretty good deal. Uh, just out some time, but you can kind of see the before and after pictures here. So uh, pretty pleased with this project. You know, one day we're probably gonna sell this place and move to the farm. When that happens, you know, we're, we've been very fortunate. This neighborhood is really appreciated in value. And uh, if we ever do decide to sell, you know, the type of buyer that's gonna come in here is gonna expect these kind of amenities. So uh, once again, just checking boxes here. And uh, I don't think you can ever go wrong investing in your house. Hey guys, glory be to God. Please hit the thumbs up, leave us a message. Tell me what you think in the comments. Love to hear from you. Please subscribe if you haven't. Ring the bell. Love to check out your channel as well. Thanks, guys.